everybody come into the house. I feel the glory in this house. I feel the glory in this house. If you're in the prayer room, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. I kept hearing who the sun sets free is free indeed. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. So tonight I feel, I feel this so strongly that if you came burdened, if you came feeling like you have some weight, that God is going to come into this place and who the sun sets free is free indeed. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom, there is joy. Oh, come on, just begin to praise him tonight for him being in this place for who the sun sets free. Come on, it's free indeed. Hallelujah. Let's worship him as we celebrate God. Come on.
this is the cry of my heart. Oh, that you would pull us closer. Oh, that you would take us deeper. Oh, that it would all be about you. of God, I urge you tonight that you can just reach out your hand and grab hold and you will grab hold of it because his glory is in this place. The God is in this place. The God that you've been searching for, the God that you've been yearning for, the God of breakthrough is in this place. The God of miracles is in this place. The God that can heal you, the God that can restore you, the God that can mend you, the God the God of breakthrough is in this place. So if you can just reach out your hands and 
grab a hold of his presence. Hallelujah. God, you're so worthy. You're so worthy. As we sing this last song, begin to proclaim how worthy he is. How good that God has been to you. How good that he's been. No matter what you have faced in this last season, begin to proclaim the goodness of God. And that's what we're going to do tonight. Come on. All the saints. And all the saints. Come on, you can sing it. Day and night. 
Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Amen. You know, every time I come up here, I get it. I'm just in awe. Because where else can some old wretched sinner like me come in a room that's full of royalty and lead them in a prayer? Amen. Come on, children of God. Come on. Come on. Children of the King of Kings and Lords of Lords. Amen. Y'all royalty right here. Amen. And I, I, right now, I just want to pray. I want to pray, and I want to praise Jesus for being faithful to that cross. Because of him being faithful to that cross, we can go before God the Father with confidence and boldness and lay our petitions down before him. Amen? Amen. First, I want to pray to God and thank him for all of you all that are here. For, I want to pray for this service. Amen? That God give us divine wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That God shall move in this place. Uh, that we shall learn and understand his ways, amen, that he has for us, amen, that his Holy Spirit shall just flow in this place, uh, that no one shall leave this place the same, uh, that we shall be spoken to, each man and every woman that is in this place shall hear from God, shall be touched by him, uh, amen, so join with me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I just come before you, Lord God, I pray, my Father, that you will move in this, my, in this place, and you, my God, shall touch people, Lord God. You, my God, shall speak to us, Lord God. I pray for our service this evening, Lord God. I pray for the speaker, Lord God. I pray for this ministry. I pray, my God, that you, my God, shall just move, my God. I pray for our pastors, my God, that you will touch them. You will keep on blessing them, anointing them, Lord God. You will place a hedge of protection about them, Lord God. Give them encouragement, my God. I pray for every man, every woman, my God, their loved ones, whatever is a burden in their heart, my God, that they shall place before you, Father. Father, I just pray, my God, that you, my God, uh, shall take this burden, my God, from them, Lord. And we shall pick up yours, for yours is life, my God. Uh, and we shall take your yoke, my God, for yours is life, my God. Father, I pray, my God, that you, my God, shall be glorified this evening in this place, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we just come before you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In the name of Jesus, we all say amen and amen. Turn around and greet one another, amen. 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 How are we doing tonight, church? Blessed. Somebody's excited back there. How are we doing tonight, church? Blessed. Amen. Amen. Welcome to our midweek service. Amen. Uh, if you're a new visitor, we want to welcome you out. Amen. Uh, if you don't have a home church, we hope and pray that you would consider this church to be your home church. Amen. We just want to uh, uh, do life with you. Amen. We want to impart into you. For and uh, we just want to uh, encourage you, amen? Encourage you in the Lord, amen? Yes. Amen. We got a few announcements tonight, amen? And then we'll jump into tithes and offerings. A few announcements is uh, this Thursday and Friday we have Bible studies, amen? Yes. Starting at 730, you can contact uh, one of our leaders for the location near you, amen? We have many throughout OC, amen? 
contact one of our leaders, and uh, we'll get the closest one near you. Amen? Yes. Amen. This Sunday, where's all the mothers at? <laughs> amen, amen. This Sunday is our Mother's Day service, uh, service at 10 a.m., prayer at 9 a.m. Every mother in attendance will receive a free gift, amen? We want to celebrate you, mother, so invite your moms, invite your aunts that have children, amen? Invite them out. We want to celebrate them, amen? Amen. And also, uh, we are having a bi- Bible, <laughs> baby dedications, amen? Uh, usually, we have them every month. If you have a baby and you want to dedicate them, we uh, advise you to go see, um, to sign them up in our information booth. Amen? Amen. Also, we have a save the date for May 30th. Amen? May 30th, we are having our baptisms. Amen? Amen. Our last baptism was awesome. It was amazing. God moved. Amen. And if you haven't been baptized and you would like to, you can also sign up in the information booth. Amen? Amen. Also, that same day is uh, we're having our Memorial Day picnic. Amen? It is going to be potluck style, and you can sign up with uh, your Bible study leader. Amen? On what to bring. Amen. Also, one more thing. Next payment for the marriage retreat is June 2nd. This is uh, a powerful investment, amen, that you don't want to miss out on for your marriage, amen. If you want to save your marriage, if you want to improve your marriage, pay this, amen. Get to this uh, retreat, amen. Amen. Let's get into tithes and offerings, amen. If you... um, if you choose to give through, uh, an, uh, through our envelope way, <laughs> I guess you can say, uh, raise your hand and one of our greeters will get that to you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Also, our ways to give is powerhouseoc.org. We also have a text to give, 714-710-1981. And also, you can call nearly any time, 562-298-7145. Amen. Amen. A quick reminder, for those who have uh, pledged for the heart for the house, amen, we want to encourage you guys to uh, continue with that pledge, amen. Let your yeses be yes and your noes be noes, amen. If you committed to this, uh, continue uh, to um, giving this way, amen. This payment goes towards our, uh, our building fund, amen, and we have a, a separate fund for that that we, we are saving, amen, for our building fund, fund amen. Amen. So the topic for tonight is, is giving establishes the kingdom of God. Amen? There are several reasons why we give. We can give through thankfulness. We could uh, give in response to what he's done. We could give to um, help, you know, keep the doors open, maybe the lights on, you know, the the AC, all these good things. But one thing uh, that I uh, really haven't delve into until uh, recently is that giving establishes the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Whose kingdom? Amen. The kingdom of God. Amen. And we see this in Acts 4, 32, when the believers share their possessions. Amen. It reads like this. All the believers were one. uh, All the believers were in one heart and one mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions were their own, but they shared everything they had with great power. And with great power, the apostles continued to testify the resurrection of the Lord. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them, at work in them all, they were no, that there were no uh, needy persons among them. From time to time, those who owned land and houses sold them. And brought the money from their sales and put it all at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed, amen, somebody say distributed, to anyone who had need. Joseph, the the Levite uh, from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought it to the apostles, and brought the money, excuse me, and and put it at the apostles' feet, amen? Amen. Amen. So in this way, they sold all they had, or they gave all they had, they shared all they had, so that the kingdom can be furthered. 
Amen. So that the kingdom can be established. So that the kingdom can be advanced. Amen. They brought it to the apostles' feet so that the apostles can distribute it. Amen. So we are doing the same thing here. You bring your tithe. You bring your offering to God. And God uses us to distribute it. Amen. He uses us to distribute uh, uh, the possessions, the money, the finances to those in need. Amen. Our, our very own pastors, don't, they, we, we, don't, we don't keep it, amen? We don't, they don't hoard it for themselves in their, in their million-dollar mansions, amen? They, they distribute it. They don't only keep it for our own. We, we, we give to other ministries, amen? We give to other uh, um, um, donations, amen? We give to other people who are doing God's work elsewhere, amen, so that they can further the kingdom there, amen? We want, that's our number one thing is we want to further the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So with that, let's go ahead and pray for today's offering. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We, we, we give you all the honor, Lord, and all the glory for what you have done and what you are doing here in this place, Father God. We lift up this offering to you, Father God. We submit it unto you, Lord, that you will, will, will multiply it, Father God. You will uh, show us, Father God, who to give it to, Father God, who is in need, Father God. Lord, we submit it to you, Lord. We give you all the honor, Lord, and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we all shout and say. Amen. Let's stand up as we give tonight. My God is able to save and to live. Throne on the bones of Elijah. If there's anything that he can do, just cast the stone that was rolled at the tomb in the guard. What happens when God says to go? And I feel him doing it now. I feel him doing it now. I feel him doing it now. Do it now, do it now. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. And this is the praise, make a dead man walk again. And open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. And this is the sound of dry bones rattling. Come on, let's, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap this tonight. Praise the Lord. Good to be in the house of God. Amen. Real quickly before we get into the word, I just want to uh, encourage all you mothers who will be with us this Sunday to, uh, I, I was just thinking about how can we, you know, every mother's prayer is to have their children to be in church with them. Amen. And, and I thought of, of a way we can, how you moms can do that. And typically every child son or daughter, was, will ask the mom, we want to take you out for lunch or for dinner for Mother's Day, correct? And so the best answer to give your son or your daughter is to say, wait a second, you can take me out for lunch or dinner, whatever you want to do, but first, I want you to take me to church. Take me to church, and then we can go to lunch. Instead of just missing church and going straight to lunch or dinner or whatever you do, don't miss that opportunity to encourage your kids to come with you to church Sunday morning. Amen? Because every mom's prayer is for their kids to be in church with them and to be in the presence of God. And who knows, your kids may get saved on Mother's Day. Amen? And so I really encourage, and if you're watching and you plan to be with us as well this Sunday morning, I encourage you that if when your kids, you know, make that invitation to take you out, just say, hey, first, let's go to church. And then we can go out to lunch and dinner. Amen? So that, I'm just trying to help you moms out. Amen? Because I know that that's your prayer. And for your son, that prodigal son or that prodigal daughter, and you're praying for them to get back in church and serving God, just tell them, hey, I want you to take me to church first, and then we can go out and, and have some fun. Amen? Uh, amen. So without further ado, we're going to have one of our team leaders come and minister. So I want you to put your hands together as Matt K comes and gives the word of God. Amen?
I said, don't choke. <laughs> Thanks, love. <clears throat> well, it's, it's uh, good to see everybody. It's good to see you guys. Uh, I, w I wanted to uh, address a topic real fast that uh, I felt very necessary to got to do it, got to say it. Uh, there's been quite a few people asking me over the last, uh, since, since I last ministered, uh, they said, hey, what's up? What's up with that? What's up with that? What's up with that? They said, hey, don't worry about it, sweetheart. Don't worry about it, sweetheart. <laughs> no, I didn't tell them that. I didn't tell them that. <laughs> I wanted to. But uh, uh, the pirate ship, the greedy one. We're done. It's, it's uh, okay, well, we didn't complete it. We didn't complete it. But the project is done. It is, it's demolished. So what had happened was I have this beautiful little daughter, and she has little sticky fingers, and things went missing. But we came into agreement. See, that's the important thing. It's how you finish. We came into agreement, me, my wife, and our son. We said, hey, son, Micah, son, can we throw it away? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, dad. Yeah, I want another one anyway. So I'm like, me too. You hear from the Lord, son. And so, you know, we, we chalked it up to uh, just hearing from God. That's really what it was. And, uh, but we, 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 we didn't give up. We, we didn't do that. We did not give up. We're, uh, we're going to start something new. That's all. So anybody who thinks I'm a quitter, I'm not a quitter. God had different plans, man. His ways are higher than our ways, thoughts higher than our thoughts. And that's just how it goes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Heavenly Father, I come before you. And, uh, and God, as we get into your word tonight, I just want to pray you would take over. Lead the way. Light the way. God, illuminate your word tonight. And I pray, God, you administer to hearts tonight. Minister to your people tonight, Lord. I'm just a vessel and a tool. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Uh, tonight, I do get the privilege. Uh, and, and it's my honor to, uh, to, to minister the word tonight. And... Uh, uh, I, I, God had been pouring so much in my heart for, for tonight. Uh, I had a, uh, I was excited to share with my wife, like, ah, uh, uh, not God, uh, wife, uh, Brianna. Uh, I, had to, I had to get rid of some of the message. Like, I had to cut it in half. I'm like, whoo, yay. Uh, she wasn't excited, though. She was like, good, good, about time. Um, remember, 30 minutes. I think I, I think uh, I think pastors told her to tell me. Just kidding, kidding, kidding. Uh, the title of this message. Uh, it's great to see some people. I haven't seen some people in a while, so it's great to see. I'm not gonna put no, no names out. <laughs> Cast an Oscar. Um, tonight, the name of the message tonight is "Don't Get Too Comfortable." Come on, somebody say, "Don't get too comfortable." Do nothing about it. Oh man, don't get too comfortable. Uh, as I was, uh, as I've been preparing and, and, and trying to trying to uh, touch heaven and and and, and put together this word tonight, there were there were uh, a few thoughts that that God kept prompting me with, a few things that He kept uh, uh, speaking to me, and 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 he, he he kept saying a few things. He said, "Remind my people that I'm not done; that the best is yet to come." He kept reminding me, he said, remind my people that they haven't seen anything yet. And, he came, and then he said this, he said, but first, remind my people to stay alert. Remind them that the fight isn't over. Come on, somebody, look, look at somebody say, the fight isn't over. Wake up! It ain't over till it's over, Adrian! It ain't over. No one's throwing in the towel, I didn't throw in the towel. My daughter destroyed it. All right, this is TKO. Uh, th th let's get right into it. Don't get too comfortable. I'm going to jump right in. 2 Samuel chapter 11. Uh, I'm going to read verse 1 through 5. This is going to be on the message translation. You guys can read along right here. Starting in verse 1, it says, When that time of the year came around again, the anniversary of the Ammonite aggression, David dispatched Joab and his fighting men of Israel in full force to destroy the the Ammonites for good. They laid siege to Rabbah, but David stayed in Jerusalem. One night, at one late afternoon, David got up from taking his nap and was 
strolling on the roof of the, of the palace. From his vantage point on the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was stunningly beautiful. David, somebody look at your wife and say, you're stunningly beautiful. <laughs> wife, you're stunningly beautiful. Come on, guys. That was, that was, that was your cute. David sent to ask about her and was told, isn't this Bathsheba, daughter of Iliam and wife of Uriah the Hittite? David sent his agents to get her. After she arrived, he went to bed with her. This occurred during the time of purification following her period. Then she returned home. Before long, she realized she was pregnant. Later, she sent word to David. You can go to the last, the last one. <laughs> he said, boo, I'm pregnant. <laughs> she, said, she said, king, I'm pregnant. There, there's, there's a lot we have to take in and, and digest as we, as we review what we just read. What did we just read? Uh, uh, David is sending off his, his trusted uh, 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 soldiers in, into, into battle, and they're, they're fighting. Uh, there's, if, if you take a step back into chapter 10, which I'm not going to read chapter 10, but if you look back into chapter, uh, chapter 10, you'll see there's this pattern of David sending his, his people, his army out to fight, and time and time again, they just throw victorious. One battle after another, they, just, they, just, they keep taking everybody down. God is on their side, and, and they, one victory after the next, and one victory after the next, and and, and before you know it, the, the enemies, they just say, you know what, we just, we're not doing this no more. <laughs> Sorry. Like, hey, we're not trying to step on your toes anymore. And, and they just, one victory after another. One victory after another. How sweet it must have been. They were fierce and bold. They were feared amongst the nations and the armies. You could even say they're unstoppable. <laughs> God's on your side. You're unstoppable. Here's the dangerous part. David was on cruise control. He was on cruise control. David was enjoying victory after victory. That's not a bad thing. Let's, let's be honest. It ain't a bad thing. When you got a victory coming your way and you're, you're man, you're, you're bathing in victory, like, take it in. And like, and, like, if you see somebody in their victory, man, like, pat them on the back. Like, take them to lunch or something. Like, and, and, and rub that victory onto you if you need some of that. Like, get in on it and, like. Like, cheer and celebrate for those that are in victory. It's their season now. It'll be your season next. And, and, and don't worry about timing. Just enjoy each other's victories because, because if you celebrate their victories, they'll celebrate yours. Yes. And you help them when they're not in their victory, they'll help you when you're not in yours. You will not always be in victory. You will not always be in victory. He was enjoying it. I don't blame him must have been nice. I haven't had too many seasons of like <laughs> victory after victory and glory after glory. So when you get it, you get it. Yes. Take it in. He, he had it made. He didn't have anything to worry about. We're talking about King David. He had complete trust as well in Joab. He, he, he trusted Joab and he said, Joab, hey, we got another one of these fools. Go handle it, please. And after a while, he's like, you know what? I ain't even going to go to battle. Was it Saturday? I ain't even gonna wake up. I'm gonna stay in bed and relax. I ain't even gonna change. <laughs> Joab, you, Joab, you got this, right? Get the boys, scrounge them up, go do your thing, right? Yes, sir. But one day, somebody say one day. One day. One day, one day when David, when King David was on cruise control. He let things get out, a little, little out, of, out of control, a little, little out of hand. He decided to go for a joyride. He decided to, uh, uh, things got out of control. We'll just say that. Here's something. He, 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 saw, he saw a beautiful girl. He didn't just see a beautiful girl. Can I be real? He didn't just see a beautiful girl. He saw a stunningly beautiful girl. And depending on what translation you read, it might, it might describe her a little different. It might also say that she was bathing. You read in between, in between the lines, David was checking out this naked chick, doing her thing, 
another day. We're going to get into that. Let's talk about this cruise control. How many people know that cruise control does not mean carefree? It's not what it, it's not what it means. I hope to one day own a Tesla. Anybody else want a Tesla? <laughs> Everybody else is lying, but <laughs> if we're on the same page. <laughs> Stand behind me, I'm first. <laughs> I'm first. Even if you own a Tesla, you're reminded, the car will remind you, hey, you're still there, right? Yeah, I'm a Tesla, I'm the baddest car on the, car on the road, and there's none finer than me, but you're there, right? I know you trust me, but you're awake, right? You're, you're still there. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll cruise for us, but you're still there? Hey, can you tap the wheel? Just, just acknowledge that you're still there. You're still awake, right? You haven't, you haven't snoozed off. Uh, a long time ago, uh, me and my mom, and, and, and I, I have three brothers, yeah, uh, we had a we had a brown station wagon, and and and, and we were driving home uh, uh, down 17th, and and uh, our papa fell asleep at the wheel. It was it was what was it, ma? What was it? It was it was all I know is the sun came up real quick after that. It was uh, uh, he fell asleep and crashed into a tree near a university. No, just kidding. Uh, hopefully nobody understood. He got that. Danny got that. Danny got that. Bro, that means we're old. <laughs> when you get references, you're like, I understood that. Uh, he, he, he did. He crashed into a tree. My mom and my brother, they went to the hospital. And, 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 and you know, it's, it was a long time ago. But he wasn't, he wasn't alert. He was not awake. He literally fell asleep at the wheel, and he crashed and put our lives in danger. We're still here. It's all, <laughs> it's all said and done. You ever hear somebody, somebody that's driving crazy, and, and you get to your destination, what do they say? You're alive, right? You're alive, right? I have to tell my wife that. I have to tell my wife that quite often. How many people know cruise control doesn't mean take your eyes off the road? You still got to stay alert. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter if you got a Tesla. Model, model one, two, or three. It don't matter. You still got to stay alert couple years, one or two years, two years ago, me and my wife, we had the scare of our life. It was the worst thing ever. We lost our son at the beach. In the moment, in the moment, we were on cruise control. We were enjoying the fellowship of the brethren. It was, it was July 17th. It was a Saturday. I'll never forget that day. It scared the snot out of me. Whew, I never knew my wife could run that fast on the sand. <laughs> but I thought it was pavement. <laughs> Five steps, I'm like, I'll call 911, baby. Keep running. Keep searching. That was no joke. That was no joke. Man, we, 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 we weren't alert. We got comfortable and like, they're around family and friends. Some of your kids were there too. Whose kids got lost? Ours. Our kids got lost. It is funny. It really is. We put our guard down for a second. We put our guard down for one, for a glimpse. We closed our eyes for a hair and, and, and just, just to, to laugh and chat and, and eat a hot dog or whatever it was, and he's gone. Hey, where's Micah? I'm sorry, what? Uh, I thought you were, no, you were, no, no, uh, Micah, <laughs> it, was, it was no joke. We, I mean, that was no joke. Uh, we, we took uh, middle, of, middle of the beginning of COVID, we took, we took our first family vacation. We were so excited. Middle of our vacation, I got COVID. We drove back. We are on cruise control going <clears throat> a miles an hour and on the way back. You know, when we were cruising, the kids were asleep in the back and, like, just, do, just doing their thing. I was it paying attention? I, I stopped paying attention to the speed. I was on cruise control. Hardly any cars. We're going to, man, we're, we're relaxed. Let's get home. We had to leave early because I was sick. I wasn't paying attention to the big, beautiful bushes and trees on the side of the PCH. And I did not spot that PC, that, that, that CHP chilling there over one of those nice, nice, one of those nice hills you see at a commercial where the car's going over. That was, that was where, and then he was like right at the bottom. And then, pull over, stop it. 
He was nice about it. He still gave me a ticket. <laughs> I still had to pay several hundred dollars. I was on cruise control, and I was not paying attention. It just, it, 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 man, I, I didn't argue. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, what do you do? Like, what do you do? What do you do when you know you're guilty? <laughs> like, how much are you going to start faking? Like, how much are you going to? It was over. That time when you did that dumb thing, when you, when you put your, your guard down, when you stopped being so alert, when you stopped paying attention. What was that? I have them. <laughs> Me and my wife have them. What was that for you? I, 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 I ask you, recollect for a second for, for yourself. Oh, my gosh. I remember that. I was here. I was this old. Um, <laughs> I look good, too, back then. And, and this is what happened. This is what happened. Let's check out 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 in NLT. It says, it says, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around roaring like a, like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. It takes a second. It takes a blink of an eye for you to put your guard down and he'll snatch you up. It doesn't even take much either. Like, it doesn't even take, it doesn't take much. Can I tell you? Our pastor has a, they both have a lot to lose. Imagine if our pastors put their guard down for a second. You know how much they have to lose? You know we're all here because of them. Imagine if they put their guard down. They can't put their guard down. We owe it to God, and we owe it to our pastors to not put our guard down. We owe it to our family who are here to not put our guard down. We owe it to them, and we owe it to God. He didn't put his guard down. He knew the danger he was going into. He, he bore the sins of all of us, and he did it anyways. He didn't let his guard down, and he still went into danger. We owe it to him. Don't put your guard down. I, in the garden, I just, God, do you realize what time it is? Like, I'm, I'm pretty tired. Like, it's like 3 in the morning, God. What are you doing waking me up? It's really early in the morning. It's technically nighttime still. So this doesn't really mm, we owe it to God. We owe it to yourself. Let's get back into 2 Samuel chapter 11. Let's read a few more verses. Let, let's, let's see what's going on in our text. It says, I'm going to start at verse uh, 2 right here. It says, one, one late afternoon, we did read this. We're going re, to review this. One late afternoon, David got up from taking his nap. First mistake, he should have been on the battlefront. He got up from taking his nap and was strolling on the roof of the palace. From his vantage point on the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was stunningly beautiful. David sent to ask about her and was told, Isn't that Bathsheba, daughter of Iliam and wife of Uriah the Hittite? This is what's interesting to me. The next, the, next, the next part of that verse, the next part of this story, it says, David, isn't this Bathsheba, daughter of Iliam, and wife of Uriah the Hittite? And, and, and I, I, in, in our Bible study, I just share with our Bible study, pay attention to punctuation in Scripture. Punctuation in Scripture is to our benefit. So, so let's check out the next part. We just read that. Isn't that Bathsheba? Like, isn't she the daughter of somebody and the wife of somebody? Next, next uh, sentence. David sent his agents to get her. After she arrived, he went to bed with her. This occurred during the time of purification from her period. Let me, let, me, let me read it. I did not give this to you guys, so I'm sorry in the back. Uh, James chapter 4 out of the TPT, verse 17, it says, So if you know of an opportunity to do the right thing today, yet you refrain from doing it, you're guilty of sin. David was made aware, fully aware of who she was and that she was not his property. And he still pursued her. Now we're in the act of sin. Hey, isn't that Bathsheba? Ooh, she's married? Man, I was looking for a wifey. She's off the market. She's off the market. 
She's off the market. Can I be real with you guys tonight? Okay. Okay. Don't use Bathsheba as an excuse. We all got it. We all got a Bathsheba. Or a Bathsheba. I don't know. <laughs> you better stop using Bathsheba as, a, as, as an excuse. We need to address the real issue at hand. But Sheba is not the issue. We are going to, eventually we're going to stop talking about her. We don't care that she was, let's keep going. James chapter 1 verse 13 through 16 out of the TPT, it says this. When you're tempted, don't ever say, God has tempted me. For God is incapable of being tempted by evil and he is never the source of temptation. Instead, it is each person's own desires. It is each person's own desires. It is each person's own desires and thoughts that drag them into evil and lure them away into darkness. Yeah. Evil desires give birth to evil actions. And when sin is fully mature, it can murder you. So, my friends, don't be fooled by your own desires. The problem in this story was never Bathsheba. It was not the stunningly beautiful woman who was bathing naked on the rooftop in the middle of the day. She was minding her own God-given reasons, her own God-given business, doing her own thing. Why was she? Not my business. I don't care. <laughs> Do you? I don't care. <laughs> David, King David, should not have been home. He should not have been napping. He should not have been in his, in his child class at home when his men were out fighting. He was not doing what he was supposed to be doing. He was in a position, in a role, and he was not doing that. He was doing that of a lazy man. A man who had leisure time. Your men are dying on the battlefield, and you're leisurely kicking it at home. But... Like, do you know what season Grey's Anatomy is on? And, like, I need to catch up. I need to binge. You know, I haven't seen Mortal Kombat. You know, I haven't seen... Okay. We ain't about to go into spoilers right now. I have not seen any of them. So, let's... The problem was not Bathsheba. It was not a naked woman. It, it, she... Do you, boo-boo? David's problem was David. It was his lust. It was his lack of focus or focus thereof. His problem was his blessings. He was in a position to relax. His own blessings kicked his butt. His problem was curiosity. A cat can only be killed how many times? I don't know. His problem was that he just wasn't satisfied. He wanted a little more. His problem was that he started wanting things that he knew weren't for him. And they didn't even belong to him. They actually belonged to somebody else. His problem was that he was way too comfortable. Tonight I want to ask the question, what's your Bathsheba? What's your crutch, your excuse, your sin? What is it? What's made you comfortable? I, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not guilt, I'm not I'm not fault free. I, I have mine. I know y'all have yours. We're not here to judge. I'm not, I'm not here to judge. But, I mean, I'll judge you if you want me to. <laughs> Will I? I'll, I'll, judge, I'll judge you. I'll, you can hate me later. I don't care. I live with my wife, not y'all. See, it really doesn't matter what her name is. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't care what kind of skin tone she, she has. She, she, she's not your wife. But she would... She's not your wife, King David. You can have anything. How about, a, how about an unmarried, de wanting, a, a woman who wants to get married to you? Oh, look, I'm sure there's women who want to marry the king. She's taken. Why do you want that which is already taken? Like, <laughs> post it on Instagram, bro. <laughs> you can go after 
the untouchable stuff. Can I be real with you? It doesn't matter one bit. It doesn't matter if she was butt naked. It's not even the point. He shouldn't have even been home. I want to ask, okay, let me ask, because I did put, I did include this in my message. Were all my people that are single or unwed and wish to get married one day? All right. All right. All right. Like three and a half people. The rest of y'all, there's a place for (laughs) y'all. Let me ask one more time. Anybody who's single and or unwed and you want to get married. I don't care if. All right. All right. All right. All right, now we're talking. I, I, I already have kids. I ain't, I ain't even about that. I ain't even about that, boo. I don't need a band. <laughs> Bro, they're all crazy. They're all the same. You know what? Let's knock it off. Let's knock it off. Let me, let me read this. Man, there's so much good stuff in James. James chapter 1, verse 17, it says, Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down from us from God, our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. Can I tell you this? You pray, you ask, you seek. You ask God. Tell God what you want. Let, and then let him totally wreck your life and, and tell, you, tell you, I don't really care what you want. I, want. I want to work on you first. So for any of the single folks who did raise their hand, tonight, God, we pray for, for not just marriages, but all the stuff leading up to. We pray that, that, that it happened rightly, that, we, that it happened in the right time. For every single one of them. Who knows, but did it happen in his own church? God, make it holy and righteous before your eyes. Give them their heart's desires, God. But first, God, that they would be pleasing to your will. Give them the most amazing hung and the most beautiful dame. In Jesus' name. That's not even even the point of the message. But I put it in here because I felt like, like we can't be talking about naked women and not address singlehood. Because there's some folks that do, okay, so like, because we're all adults here, you know what I mean? Like, I thought, I, I, I had this dilemma, like, are we, are we going to go there? Are we going to go there? Are we going to go there? So like, if you're just looking for some action, you better, be, like, seek God. Yeah. Seek God. 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 You know God. <laughs> you, let me take a drink. Simmer down. Simmer down. I don't know who this is for. I don't know. Y'all live in the flesh. So things happen in the flesh. And so if you're if you're in that boat, let's let's go this way. Single or wed. So like put God first. And 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 can we acknowledge for a second that we know what is sin? Can, can we drop the front? And, and acknowledge between us and God, God, I admit I'm a liar, and I know when I sin. Can we be real? It'll help us out. It'll help us out. You, you, you. She, she sent King David a text, and she's like, hey, <laughs> uh, this is probably not what you wanted, but guess what? <laughs> I'm having your baby. You're like, that's what happened. That's literally what happened. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it up to you guys to go finish 2 Samuel chapter 11 and see what ha- See the desperation that King David takes to clean up his mess. See how much more ugly it gets as he avoids doing the right thing. Do it right the first time. Avoid the pitfalls. Tonight as we, as we wrap it up, tonight as we wrap it up, I want to ask, what's your focus on tonight? What's your Bathsheba? Tonight I want to ask, what have you put first in place of God? Tonight I want to ask, what kind of excuses are you making? Come on, I, I'm a liar. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm flawed. Uh, I mess up so much. I need, I need mercy, grace, and forgiveness, man. 
I was such a dirty, unholy, disgusting individual that I met her. Can I tell you though? <laughs> I was single and I'm not now, and I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I am looking forward to our marriage retreat. Oh my goodness. Come on, let's 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 bow our heads, let's close our eyes, let's let's go before God tonight. Let's go before God tonight. Come on, if you were listening tonight, your ears were open, he said, man. I've been trying to put this away in the corner. I've been trying to cover it up. I've been trying to put this off and, and avoid uh, addressing this. But can I say tonight is a perfect opportunity to address that Bathsheba, to address the crutch, to, to, to address what we've been putting off, that, that secret sin, whatever it is. And tonight, honestly, I, don't, I, I didn't even know I was going to say secret sin. I don't know what it is. But can I tell you this? God knows exactly where you struggle. Can I tell you God is full of mercy and hope? Can I tell you God has an amazing grace for you? Can I tell you that, that your hidden secret sin, that, that torment and destruction that's happening on the inside, God already knows? All he wants is for you to acknowledge him. Just cry out to him. To God. Oh, my God. I need your help. God, tonight I admit I am jacked up from the back up. But God, I need your help. I want to start over. I want a new slate, a clean slate. I want a brand new beginning. I want to be a new creation. I want to let it go. I don't even know how to let go of all the junk, the sin. I don't, I don't even know how to let go of it. That's fine. That's perfect. Can I tell you, you're in a perfect place have an encounter. Tonight I want to ask you, wherever you're at, whatever you're dealing with, whatever struggle it is, whatever thing, man, I can't let go, man. If you would take a step of faith, be a little daring tonight, a little bold and a little crazy, say, man, this is, whew, this is stupid. I'm going to do it. Oh my gosh, I'm going to do it because I am sick and tired Whew, I am sick and tired. I want to ask, if that's you, you need to come up here. If that's you, please come up here. I need to pray with you. Heads bowed, eyes closed. If that's you, I want to ask you, please step out of your seat and make your way up. I don't care who you are. And I do not believe God gave me this empty word to speak to a bunch of perfect people. So I'm going to give everybody another opportunity. I don't know who you are and where you come from. I don't know what you're dealing with and what you're hiding, what you're hiding underneath. But I want to let you know there's an altar open right now where you can lay it all down before a living God, a forgiving and good God. And he wants to tell you that right now. If that's you, I want you to stand out of your seat and come to the front. Come to the altar. Nobody's getting up. That's all right. Nobody's getting up. I know there's a few people in here you're so scared of, em of being embarrassed you'd rather continue living exactly where you are and how you are and, and instead of worrying about that embarrassment oh my gosh they're gonna know I deal with the first three four five years of my salvation I hit the altar asking God for forgiveness 
who's not saved. I was not saved for the first three or four years of my salvation. I was 16 when I got saved. Please believe. I was not, I wasn't, I needed some salvation every service. I did not have it down. We had some people. I want to give one more call. If you have not raised up out of your seat and come to the front, I won't, I'm, I'm, I'm begging you, please, do not leave the same way. I want to pray with these people. Do not leave the same way. God has a new beginning for you tonight. I want to, I want to ask one more thing. Maybe you've never had the opportunity or, or taken the opportunity to get right with God. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a faithful attender at Powerhouse. I tithe. I, I go to Bible study, so-and-so's Bible study. I love it. But I've never actually, I've never, I don't think I've ever given my life to Christ. I don't really know him. I think I do, but like, I'm just, I'm scared. I just, I don't think I really know him. It's a night you want to be sure? I want to ask you out of your seat and come to the front. I want to pray for you. At this time, we're going to pray for some folks. I get the honor and privilege of praying with you guys.